And good morning again. My name is Lisa June Durkee, and I thank you. I thank you very much for joining us here at the State House in Augusta. We gather here moved by our grief in response to the shootings in Lewiston, hearts breaking for the families, friends, and survivors of the tragedy. I am here today because I trust that we all want what I pray for each time I preach. In the words of the psalmist, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God. I would add to this that I pray our actions would be acceptable in God's sight as well. But I'm not here only as an ordained pastor in the Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, but also as a mother, a longtime high school educator, and as a daughter whose father ended his life by suicide with a gun when I was nine years old. The English writer John Ruskin once said that there is no wealth but life. In keeping with that thought, when we make decisions regarding what protections are available to us, what are our rights and our privileges, we do well to consider what most significantly ensures the pursuit of life. I speak as a person of faith, and we are all people of faith, whether in God by whatever name or faith in good or in love as a highest goal. We have faith in our democracy, which is why we gather here today to make certain that our legislators hear our united voices. I'm joined here this morning by others who will share with you their personal stories and their hopes for sensible legislation around gun ownership. We do not want to be part of allowing the injury and loss of, vit of life due to gun violence that is so prevalent in our nation and here in our own main backyard. We are here to show support for our legislators working to enact common sense gun laws, which the majority of Mainers support. We are living in a state of emergency where the only wealth is life, but we continue to treat our rights of ownership as somehow more sacred than life itself and the love that we would sow. The several people who will speak this morning are representative of the diversity of support for the movement to end gun violence now. Following these speakers, we will have a moment of silence for the victims of gun violence here in Maine and around the nation. We will talk with our representatives before they enter their first legislative session of 2024. Let it not be said that we did nothing to keep our state safe. Please join me now in welcoming to the podium Arthur Barnard, who sadly lost his son in the shootings in Lewiston in October. Thank you, Arthur. Good morning, everybody. I've, uh, I've spent the last two months being educated. I'm not a gun owner. OK, I'm trying. I think I'm going to hold it for you, if that's all right. I can get closer. If you want to hold First of all, I said good morning. <laughs> I've, uh, I've spent the last two months getting educated. I'm not a gun owner. I understand both sides. I understand that, you know, people's rights in the Second Amendment and the right to own and bear arms. I mean, do I think people should own assault rifles? Not really. But here we are, we have millions of them. So it's not all about taking guns. It really isn't. I think what's happened here is we as a nation have gotten careless in how we've written our laws. We have our red flag laws, we have our yellow flag laws, and, 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 and things like this. I think we should have that red flag law. But the honest truth is, there is nothing supporting 
that law to make it in reality enforceable. The truth of the matter is, you know, you, you hear all this conversation about how who should have taken his guns. It's like a blame game, you know, the army, the sheriff's department, okay? When the reality of the matter is, yep, one of them could have gone down and taken his guns, but five minutes later he could have gotten in his car and gone down to Dunkin' Donuts or 7-Eleven or any of these places and bought one privately. And no one needed to know Assault weapon or not, he could have flashed that arm, you know, armed services ID. No one would have ever questioned him, or he, not even that. Anybody could have done this, and he could have gone and done the same thing. We've gotten careless, and we've left loopholes that allow these kind of things. How could we ever protect our children in these schools if we have loopholes like that? We can't. It's impossible. I've read a lot about, you know, uh, these articles from these senators, these legislations that they've wanted to pass. Excuse me, my hands are shaking. <laughs> um, how they want to get to the root of the problem. But so many of these things are too superficial to really do any good. All right? This is not about taking guns, okay? This is about doing the right thing and finding the right politicians who are willing to do the right thing more than they're afraid of losing their jobs. <sighs> you know, I said the day after this happened, I mean, I knew when it happened, I was there with him that night. He, he was supposed to leave with me. He wanted to go someplace else. I offered to go there because that's where his friends came. He was supposed to leave with me because we left his car home. He says, Dad, I just want to play a couple more games with my friend. I hadn't driven a mile when I got the call. They didn't have a chance. We have to stop being careless as a nation. Not a democratic thing, not a Republican thing. Common sense for all of us. So I'm not gonna carry on too long, but I know that I will probably spend the rest of my life trying to get the right people, trying to find the right people who are going to do the right thing. I've spoken to probably 75 of my friends. They're all NRA people. They're all gun owners. And when I explained to them the reasons and these loopholes that I found out they shouldn't be there, they said, yeah, we could get behind that. So I want to talk to both sides. I just think it's sad because people haven't addressed some of these most basic things that would support and make these things actually enforceable. So I'm not going to carry on too much longer now. I, I just. I just wanted people to know that I understand both sides, okay? But we don't have to lose our children in these schools. We can save thousands of lives if we just try to do the right thing here.
So with that, this year, I'm going to be trying to put together a speaking program to educate people on how these laws are really written and try to find out how many Americans, because I don't think these things should be decided by this small, minute minority we call our politicians. I think the people themselves need to let the politicians know that these things can happen. So, I wish I brought a picture of my son. I didn't. So before I leave, I'm just going to turn around so everybody can see his picture on the back of my shirt. And let you know that we can save lives. We just have to be willing to meet halfway. Thank you. different. <laughs> My name is Max. My name is Max. I was born in Gardner, just a few miles south of here. Grew up in Bowdenham. When I was a kid, most families had guns in their houses, and most of them hunted. I've hunted here for over 50 years. Those guns that were in the houses back when I was a kid, none of them would hold more than a handful of shells. And assault rifles that could hold 30 or more were unheard of outside of the military. Things have changed since then. High capacity weapons are now easily available to almost anyone who can afford them. My deer rifle can hold five shells, although I've never put more than three in it. My bird gun can only hold two, and I'm okay with that. Federal law prohibits the hunting of waterfall, waterfowl with a gun that holds more than three shells. And it's been that way ever since I can remember. The fact that we give a flock of ducks a better chance to escape than what we give to a classroom full of school kids. That tells me that our regulatory, regulatory system is woefully inadequate. I've made good use of my Second Amendment rights, and I hope to contribute, continue to do so for some time. But it has never been more clear that we need to do more to protect public safety. The laws we've got right now are not up for the job. I know there are a lot of hunters and gun owners in Maine who understand this. And I can see that there's also quite a few that don't. I hope the ones who do understand this will join me in speaking up for better laws. Now is the time. Thank 
you. Good morning. My name is Janelle Crowley, and I'm a NICU nurse. <laughs> Sorry. I was sick last week and I'm trying to keep the mask on to keep people safe, sorry. My name is Janelle Crowley. I'm a NICU nurse and chief steward for Maine, Na Maine State Nurses Association and National Nurses United at Maine Medical Center. Many people may wonder why nurses think they need to speak out about gun violence and quite simply, it's because the lack of strong gun control laws threatens public health. And nurses know that moral outrage is not enough that thoughts and prayers do nothing and cannot protect anyone from a bullet. Month-old statistics from December 7th tell us at least 40,167 people died in 2023 from gun violence. That's an average of 118 deaths per day. Of those deaths, 597 were from the 632 mass shootings, which also left 2,300 people injured. Let me say that again. As of December 7th, there were 632 mass shootings in the U.S. for 2023. That's almost an average of two mass shootings a day in this country. We know mass shootings affect everyone in every community and all walks of life all over the country. Hundreds, if not thousands of people every day learn the horrors of gun violence and mass shootings. And on October 25th, it happened in our own backyard. In Lewiston, 18 people were left dead, including the loved one of a friend of mine. And 13 more were injured in the deadliest mass shooting of 2023. And one of the most deadly shootings in the past decade. This tragedy was unnecessary and occurred because a weapon that should never be in the hands of a civilian was too easily accessible. Those who lost their lives were injured. Those who lost their lives and were injured were not just statistics. They were friends, co-workers, and loved ones. They were Mainers, and we owe it to them to bring forth accountability and action to make sure something like this can never happen in our state again. And although I wasn't... And although I wasn't directly affected by the horror and tragedy of what happened in Lewiston, I myself am a victim of gun violence and of the effect of gun control laws. My father, who was bipolar with PTSD, had been in and out of mental hospitals for almost a decade when he was able to buy a gun and kill himself within weeks of his final psych ward stay. The lack of background checks and red flag laws placed a gun in my father's hand. It left my mother without the love of her life, my brother and I without our dad, my two children with very few memories of their grandpa, and my niece, never, my niece and nephew never even had the opportunity to meet their grandfather. In some ways though, I count myself lucky that he only harmed himself that day because I could be telling a completely different story today had he given into the paranoia and flashbacks that often have plagued him, and he had decided to turn that gun on others instead of just himself. But no one should have to tell a story like mine. We have the ability to prevent tragedies like mine and those of our neighbors in Lewiston from happening again in the future. As nurses, we know that prevention is the best medicine. We would rather stop future death and injuries from happening than have to treat victims of such horror and gun violence as what we saw in October. Nurses recognize that gun violence is a public health crisis, and we have been ignoring the symptoms for way too long. We can't keep putting a Band-Aid on a gaping wound caused by these tragedies and keep hoping that it will heal itself. As National Nurses United President Jean Ross said, we cannot let politics and lobbyists who have sanctioned gun violence by blocking common sense reform 
continue to allow this devastation of our communities and nation. This is not about playing politics. It's about saving lives. Thank you. I'd like to invite everyone to, if you have a tea light, we hold them because we hope to light a way forward. We hold them because we believe there is hope for significant change towards safety. And I know that the halls run deeply. If you would, see if we could encourage those who are in the greater halls to have a moment of silence for those who have lost their lives, not only in Lewiston, but because they are especially on our hearts. But as Arthur just said, he wished he'd said aloud the 40,000 individuals who died as a result of a gunshot wound. So if you would, please join me. I'm going to make it last just long enough to make you wonder how long it will last. I think you all heard me say that. Because this is a moment where we are together, united for change. Please, if you would, be still, be silent, and remember those who have lost their lives and their loved ones. Now let us go in peace. <laughs>